Thank you very much. Uh, this is not exactly the speech at the Capitol I hoped to be giving after the election. But after a few weeks of taking selfies in the woods, I thought it would be a good idea to come out. And I am very grateful to Harry for inviting me to be part of this celebration. We must stand up for our democracy, just as Harry has done his entire career. Let me just mention briefly one threat in particular that should concern all Americans, Democrats, Republicans, and independents alike, especially those who serve in our Congress. The epidemic of malicious fake news and false propaganda that flooded social media over the past year. It's now clear that so-called fake news can have real-world consequences. This isn't about politics or partisanship. Lives are at risk. Lives of ordinary people just trying to go about their days to do their jobs, contribute to their communities. It's a danger that must be addressed, and addressed quickly. Let's bring in Linda Tran in Washington. She's a Democratic strategist and CBSN political contributor. And also in Washington, Kevin Sheridan, a Republican strategist and former communications director for Paul Ryan during his 2012 vice presidential bid. All right, Linda, let's start with you. What did you make of Hillary Clinton's comments on fake news? You know, I think she was touching on a topic that has been uh, top of mind for a lot of folks, both on the left and the right. There's been some concern about um, whether or not the prevalence of fake news during the 2016 presidential election actually helped to sway folks' opinions, especially uh, late-breaking decision makers when it came to the presidential election. There's also been a lot of analysis about um, how the, the impact could uh, outlast the election itself. So I think it makes sense that she was talking about it today. Kevin, on another issue here, let me ask you about the president-elect going after Chuck Jones. He's the union leader who said Mr. Trump, quote, lied his blank off when he took that victory lap over the carrier deal. First, I'm wondering, Kevin, what you think of Mr. Trump's reaction. And second, politically, does it even matter that the president-elect was essentially called out by a union leader for exaggerating something? No, and I think he's a Democratic operative from what I know of him, but I, I think this will fade uh, quicker than anything else we've seen because it's going to move on to the next thing. And we, what we need to do is just keep, keep in mind that we need to separate what Trump is doing and picking a cabinet. He's 10 cabinet sp uh, posts in. Uh, and what he's saying on Twitter. And we really just need to let these, uh, you know, these little Twitter storm, little, you know, back and forth things that happen on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, put those in context because what's really, what really matters is what he's doing, what he, who, the people he's picking who have by and large been excellent picks, accomplished people with, uh, with real track records to, um, to go on. And, you know, the 100-day agenda that he's working with Paul Ryan and, and Mitch McConnell on right now as he, uh, as he gets into the end of his transition, the middle of his transition. So I really... I pay attention to the actual stuff and the Twitter back and forth, I think, are far less important right now. Linda, let me ask you about that. Do you think that these tweets matter? Well, I, I do think they matter. I mean, look, everybody knows what kind of a Twitter user Donald Trump was. Um, th throughout 2016, he made very, very clear that he was going to directly engage with people that way, and also that he wasn't afraid to personally attack individuals through Twitter. He did the same thing with Kazir Khan. He did the same thing with other folks throughout the campaign season. The, and the other piece, the, the fact that the union leader was talking about um, how many jobs actually were saved versus the number that Donald Trump presented, it's a fact check. It's something that you know, somebody should not be so thin-skinned about that they feel like they have to directly call somebody out. Uh, what I think is problematic here is not so much the fact that there is this engagement between Donald Trump and the union leader, but the fact that he continues to be focused on individual attacks on him as opposed to the task at hand, which is really about building an inclusive government. It's what he committed to do, and we're, we're so far we haven't seen very many signs of that. Well, let's talk about um, the administration moving forward here. Linda, Donald Trump's pick to run the EPA. Scott Pruitt has sued the agency over its carbon regulations and has questioned the science behind climate change. Are you expecting a battle over this pick from Senate Democrats? 
You know, I think that we can expect that there, there are going to be some significant battles all along the way, given the, um, the options that the uh, president-elect has put before the American people. Uh, his pick for the EPA has not only sued the EPA in, in the past, he's actually a climate change denier, which runs entirely counter to what the uh, Environmental Protection Agency is about. It's a, it's a science-driven agency. It's an agency that's, you know, dedicated to protecting the air we breathe for generations to come. And so the fact that this is somebody that he wants to be at the helm of that is certainly going to raise the ire of many, many advocates and activists all around the country. Kevin, how do you see it? What is the message being sent with this EPA pick? Well, I think the message being sent is that for eight years, the EPA has promulgated rules against uh, the industry with very little input from uh, from the fossil fuels industry. Uh, Hillary Clinton and, and Barack Obama uh, were both you know, committed to destroying the coal industry. That's just a fact. And they believed that it was some higher calling that they needed to uh, you know, commit to uh, this, this climate agenda and this green energy, green jobs agenda. And they, there was very little input from the industry. And now that um, you know, you're going to actually have somebody who's you know, more friendly to that industry, frankly, and is going to take a, a fairer look at it, uh, I don't think that's a bad thing. I don't think you're going to get much. You might get. You're going to get Democrat opposition in the Senate to this. You're going to get a, an uproar from uh, from the environmental lobby for sure. But I think he'll ultimately get through. And I think um, you know it, it's a different day in Washington now. It's it's no longer that the uh, that the energy environment that the that the environmental lobby uh, has you know the entire ear of the president. We now have a uh, a more balanced approach to it. All right, Kevin Sheridan and Linda Tran. Great to see you both. Thank you. Thank you.